That'd be amazing if you could, because I have the other one on here and I'm a little worried about memory. I don't want to lose, you know, I don't want to lose the forum. And then Miran says he's waiting in the, in the, in the waiting room. I don't see a waiting room. Do you? No, I don't, I don't see him here. You don't. Okay. So the meetings in the chat, or you should also have it, you know, the agenda in, in his um, email box as well. So welcome everybody. We'll, you know, get going and then hopefully um, Tom will be able to record. And then on here, I was hoping Stephanie would be here soon too to be able to do it. Um, so we have uh, updates today that we'll be giving on other wave now events, um, discussion and possible action on a CIS 22-0158. And be having a discussion on that as well. And then a uh, West Valley housing update as always. So welcome to everyone. We're really happy uh, to see you and have you here today. And really, as I said, kind of my opening remarks were about the forum. Does any of the other uh, steering committee members want to add anything else about the forum before you know we jump on and go forward? I'll add a few things. Yeah, go, Ray. Welcome. No, I thought the, thank you so much. So I, th I thought the forum was great. I thought it was, um, yeah, like we saw a bunch of different viewpoints from a bunch of different people, but. Everybody had equal time and it was fair and it was uh, it was good information to have about candidates. So I think that's great. And I think that we did a service to the community. So good job, everybody. Perfect work, especially Pat. Kudos to Pat. Agreed. Yeah. Anyone else? Here's Moran. All right, so we'll go forward then from there. Uh, we now have updates uh, coming and wanted to get a uh, comment. We don't have any elected officials here. We just heard from them or almost elected, some of them. Uh, but we do have Corinne here and we're really happy she could join us today and really appreciate her taking the time. And so she's coming to give us updates from Lhasa and as well, just to give us a little bit of progress. The homeless count, as we all know, uh, finished. And we did have some preliminary um, findings right in our last meeting, but that was really soon after the count. And so we're hopeful that she can also provide just where things are and how things are going. So Corinne, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Olivia. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I am still talking about the homeless count, but the next phase of the, of the homeless count, it is over. I don't think we met since uh, the, the, the night of the homeless count, which was Tuesday, February 22nd for SPA 2. There were 34 deployment sites within SPA 2, San Fernando Valley, Santa Clarita. Some of those on this call have uh, been the deployment site coordinators. Thank you for that. And also volunteering for the count this year. Um, for obvious reasons, the number of volunteers were, were very, um, were, were not as, as what we have seen throughout the years. Every year, before COVID anyway, we've had a, about 8,000 volunteers countywide. This year we had a little bit under 5,000. Um, we are in the process of collating those numbers uh, that we collected from the street count or the point in time count. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, collating those numbers with the other three components of the count, which is the youth count, the demographic survey, and the housing and inventory count, which we shall call HIC. Um, and so it's the combination of those four numbers that's going to give us the actual definitive, definitive data. So we don't have those yet. Our data team is working on those numbers. And I do want to say that the numbers that you have sort of collected that night are definitely not the numbers that are going to come out. Because again, those numbers are, are, um, are mixed with the other four components, if that makes sense. The, it's it's the average of those four components that that makes the result of the count, and that is not 
I want to say that is not a LASA formula. That's the HUD methodology that we are applying. LASA is uh, just an administrator of the council. I'm giving a generic information here, but I do feel like it's important to highlight that. So, um, you know, folks don't think that LASA is the one who's coming up with this methodology. It's coming up, it's coming to us from the HUD, from the Housing and Urban Development. So I will stop there if there are any questions. <clears throat> I have a question for Ray. Yeah, go ahead, Ray. Okay. So overall, how would you say, or how do you think that the uh, count went this time? You mean in terms of numbers or in terms of logistics? Well, numbers and then also uh, just facilitating and how it went, especially in our district, in our area. Right. Um, I, think, I think there were a few challenges um, because of the fact that the, because of the, the use of the app, you know, it was the first time ever that we are uh, doing the tally count with the app. So there were a few glitches with the app that does not necessarily mean that it will affect the numbers. I know a lot of, lots of folks are very concerned about the integrity of the data because of that, but uh, the volunteers have done a wonderful job reporting those numbers, even if they thought at one point that it wasn't particularly captured, they were all captured and they are all considered. So I think we're doing well. I know people like to ask me, how do I think the numbers will be? Will they be up? Will they be <laughs> less from you know, two years ago uh, since we didn't have one last year? It's really hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. I mean, I know that, you know, we have COVID. So of course there are lots of folks who who fell into, you know, homelessness because of because of COVID as well. But at the same time, we have all these um, housing solutions that have been implemented um, since then. So I really don't know. I know that did not answer your question, Ray. No, that was good. Thank you. I appreciate it. The honesty is great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hi, hi, Corinne. Thank you for coming out tonight on a Sunday evening or late late afternoon. We appreciate that. And again, just to re reassert the the interest and need for um, you know kind of more transparency on the numbers of actual shelter beds. You know, especially in the West Valley. Just had conversations on social media uh, where people are saying that nobody wants help. Uh, there's, there's empty beds all over the place. And we just know that's not true, but it would be good to have just a regular kind of updated score of uh, and tabulation of, of uh, you know, what the actual current capacity is and also occupy, uh, the occupancy numbers as well. So, so I know that used with some challenges there's a lot going on this last month, but if we could have that as a monthly thing, it'd be great. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's noted, Tom, that uh, um, we are expecting internally for those numbers to, uh, to report back to folks. There are numbers of, of um, entities that have asked for that. So I think it's, uh, I'm not sure at what stage internally we're at to have those numbers because they keep changing all the time. Um, but I, I wasn't able to get them. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, I think not long ago, also West Hills um, Neighborhood Council has, has asked for them. I know you've asked for them at Crusida as well. So yes, definitely, uh, please know, rest assured that it's at the forefront of the, of the things to do or to report on rather. And, if I may add, um, additionally, uh, lots of folks have asked me recently about the Blue Ribbon Commission, if you're interested about where it's at. Um, I believe that the Blue Ribbon Commission has met for the last time last week, uh, last Wednesday. I believe that was their last meeting, unless there is another one where they are drafting the recommendation uh, about the governance of LASA specifically, if folks wanted to know. 
Thanks, Ken. Does could anyone have final could, questions? Yeah, go ahead, Tom. Yeah, just a quick question. Could you describe just really briefly what that Blue Ribbon uh, group is doing? Yes, so the Blue Ribbon Commission is a commission that was uh, formed sometime last year by the, I wanna say September it was, or August was the time that the motion was introduced at the Board of, of um, the Board of Supervisors. And the mission of this Blue Ribbon Commission was specifically to look into the governance of LASA to look at its efficiency, to look at whether LASA should continue the way that it is, or should it be, the word that they're using is, should it be collapsed and should it be reconstructed? Think of it as reimagining LASA. So the, the shelf life of that Blue Ribbon Commission was six months, it's about now, it's about March or April that it should sunset. And uh, they have formulated uh, some recommendations, some set of recommendations after hearing from all service providers, all eight spa wide, mostly from different departments, from all the entities that are involved in solving ending homelessness. And it's from those uh, uh, feedbacks that they, the commissioners on the Blue Ribbon Commission are crafting their, their um, final draft to be approved by the Board of Commissioners. And I'm not aware of what they have come up with in terms of uh, draft recommendation. Does that answer your question, Tom? All right, beautiful. Thank you, Corinne. And again, we're so glad to see you and thank you for you know, your time. We really appreciate you. All right, we also want to welcome people, you know, who have come in. So thank you so much, Aida. Happy Persian New Year to you. We're glad that you could attend today. And then also, I'm glad Ray has gotten, Stephanie has arrived. So Stephanie is my co-host. So Stephanie, we're glad you're here. And welcome to Sharon Brewer, who is also attending today. So if you are here on behalf of your neighborhood council, and Ken was here the first. He was the first to arrive this morning, as well as Moran and Lorraine and Tom in the steering committee. So if you are in a neighborhood council or representing them, we do encourage, if you could, please just rename yourself so that you know people can see as people arrive. And we really are glad that you're here. Here. So we're going to move on with our agenda today. And so Stephanie, please feel free to jump in. Did you have any comments, Stephanie, that you wanted to share from the forum or anything in welcome? Nope, just glad that everybody could be here today. All right, thank you so much. Okay, we did want to give uh, at our last meeting, it did come up about the West Valley Food Pantry. And so we did want to just give an update on uh, where things stand on that. So I'm happy to speak on it, or I didn't know, Tom, if you wanted to address it, or is that a shout out check? Yes or no? <laughs> All right, so for the West Valley Food Pantry, um, they have proposed uh, to put a, um, it's not an expansion of the West Valley Food Pantry. It is, they have uh, gotten money and then they are also looking to seek to increase uh, the funds to match that money um, in terms of building uh, extra facilities on the north side of the campus where they are currently located to meet the needs of um, the constituents that they serve and the people who attend the food bank and come. And so there were meetings that were held. There was one two days ago um, where the public did weigh in um, on the neighborhood council side to try to answer questions about what's going on with that and to weigh in. And so um, they are moving ahead and seeing how the votes go with that. There isn't anything definitive yet. Um, if things are not approved, then eventually they would continue with their operations as it is going now. Um, if it is approved, then they will be building and then it will be about a 6,000 foot um, facility that would then be uh, behind, still would be drive up service uh, to continue to serve those who are food insecure and our unhoused folks 
who are also um, in need of food, you know, to help stretch things along. And hopefully, uh, if you hear or see of any other neighborhood council meetings, that this is something then um, that you might want to bring back to your neighborhood councils and talk about it as it provides an essential uh, service. And Debbie Decker has been in this community um, fighting and addressing these needs uh, for a very long time. She's incredible at what she does, and the need is still there. And so hopefully, if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, and for your neighborhood councils, this is something that, you know, if you wanted to go back, voice support or discuss it, uh, this is, you know, something that would really be needed and valuable. And then if you, again, have questions, just reach out and we'll try to pro uh, provide more updates as things come along. And so, um, Tom, did you want to add on anything? No, that's great. <clears throat> and then there was an LA planning uh, com commission meeting uh, last Tuesday, and they're holding their final decision until it uh, goes through the the West Valley Warner Center um, uh, neighborhood council, uh, the full committee. It went through their plum committee um, uh, just this last uh, week, and then it'll probably go through their full board at some point in the future. So they're kind of holding back on, on a final determination until they get feedback from their neighborhood council. Thanks, Tom. Anyone have any questions or? And then we do want to welcome the uh, woman of the hour. So Pat just arrived. So if everybody can give a round of applause, like there's a round for Pat. Thank you, Pat. Thanks, Pat. <laughs> you did a fantastic job. All right. Thank you. It's it's very stressful. It really is. And you did it flawlessly. So you didn't seem like it was stressful at all. It seemed just like I, you know, because I was I was trying to keep track of the time and everything. It's just, it's hard. It didn't seem like it was hard for you. So you are, you know, doubly uh, talented then in masking the stress as well as carrying it off um, without a hitch. So thank you again. We're really glad. I, I think it went pretty good. Um, it, definitely so. And that's in large part because of you. And thank you for providing such uh, rich questions for those of the steering committee and the public who sent in their questions. Um, we really appreciated those that were sent ahead of time. And then our steering committee also submitted questions. And so I think that those questions also prompted such a rich response. So thank you. Yeah, right. we, we um, uh, Tom, Tom provided some and I kind of, uh, kind of mixed some of his with some of mine and some that that had been that that you said were sent in earlier so yep absolutely and i think that that really worked well so thank you yeah. all right so after our west valley food pantry update we're moving on to agenda item number five discussion and possible action on support of cis uh 220158 i will pop the agenda in here so that you can click on that as well um if you need that there you go and if you click on here, and I'll take this over here to this, there we are. Can you guys all see that or do I need to reshare my screen? Yeah, see it. It's good. Oh, all right, beautiful. Sometimes when you click over, you have to go back and again. All right, so um, Tom, would you like to speak with this? As I believe sure. you All right, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, this is, uh, you know, one of the, you know, as ongoing things that Wave Now will be taking positions on. And so this has also been posted to the link and, and uh, that we'd also discussed and posted last uh, meeting. So just to let everybody know that um, the idea is that, you know, Wave Now has, should be able to uh, weigh in on some of these issues and also share information for neighborhood councils to bring back uh, to their own councils as well. So uh, as far as this particular council file goes, it's really, um, primarily to take a look at how to uh, increase potential shelter beds, primarily, primarily by allowing faith communities, uh, uh, nonprofits to possibly, you know, add additional beds. And part of the restriction right now is some of the zoning requirements. So <clears throat> a couple of things received on neighborhood council um, actually uh, passed this at their general board, the CIS was basically, we're in support of this. It wasn't very uh, detailed CIS, primarily just saying that we supported it. Um, the idea is that this is not 
This does not propose um, zoning changes. It actually is ask, asking for report back, uh, three different report backs uh, to the um, council, city council, uh, from LA city planning and also from the city attorney to see what the parameters would be, how does it look, what would we have to do? Uh, so I just, some people think, hey, oh my gosh, we can't change zoning laws. Well, you know, we, we have to be able to look at some of these things as they come up and see what's reasonable. And the best way to kind of look at this is to actually ask, ask for information and report back from these agencies. Um, we also, um, just to kind of expand out a little bit, we only have one uh, winter shelter in all of service area two, which is Santa Clarita Valley and San, San Fernando Valley. And the only one that's located is in Pacoima. And that's full every night. They turn people away routinely because there's just not enough shelter beds, right? So this is an opportunity for us to say, hey, can we provide additional shelter beds? And of course, when someone goes into a shelter, they start to get linked with services. And so the more people that we have having going in for help and support actually supports the process of becoming housed. And that's kind of what we're missing right now, like all hands on deck. And so, um, just wanted to kind of like lay that out there. I also know that we we're going to vote on this today. Uh, did, was someone going to provide that process or uh, do we have like a roster that we can refer to to do that? Yeah, so in your agenda, if you scroll down, um, going to the bottom um, in here, and then you can see on Wavena taking positions. And so as it goes, we have, you know, from each of our steering committee members have a vote, um, as well as our uh, non-for-profit organizations of which we don't have any members here right now. And then also each neighborhood council has uh, one representative that they have as a liaison that can also um, take a position. And that is based on you know, their neighborhood council. And each neighborhood council then works it out for themselves whether or not they wanted to participate in that and take positions or not. And so on that end, we have Ken, we have Aida, who is on there. And then I'll just pull up, hold on a second. And then also wanted to just mention, Olivia, obviously if someone has comments or questions, there could yes. be some discussion on this as well. Yeah, of course. So if anyone does and it wants questions in the meantime, while we pull that up before the vote, then please feel free to weigh in and do so. Yes, go ahead, Ken. I'm um, sorry, but I'm not real familiar with this measure. Are there any pros and cons to it that you can let us know? Uh, yeah, just basically the pro I just mentioned, that it's a way to take a look to see how we could possibly get more shelter beds from some of the uh, faith communities and, and nonprofits that aren't currently able to because of zoning laws. So that would be an advantage. There all also is concern about, um, you know, the sanctity of zoning laws. There's concern about possibly changing a zoning law. Of course, this council file does, doesn't change. It just asks for information back. But some people might say that this is like a step in the direction of changing zonal, zoning laws. And so they might be against it for those purposes only. Thank you. Sure. All right, is there any other questions that people have? I'm not seeing any other hands up. And so we do have voting members and you have people that are actual uh, official liaisons. We do have neighborhood councils that have elected to not be an official liaison and won't be um, taking a position um, on issues, yes? And so we can see those people that we have here today who are voting. If there is a change to that, if you feel like you do, then you know, as a neighborhood council, take it back to your council and decide that you do wanna be a participating member in terms of voting and want to have a liaison that is here, um, then please feel free uh, to do so. And then Sharon will take your question in a second because we welcome it. And then also going forward then, if it is something we've tried as Tom pointed out in our last meeting, so if you weren't here in the last meeting, um, that we are keeping a running list. So like he mentioned this, year, EIS was put on the agenda last month and then sent out a month ahead of time. And we did that um, to try to then give neighborhood councils a month's 
head up, heads up, so that they can then go to their neighborhood council meeting um, for whatever committee they have that would address this, be able to vote on it or have discussion about it so that they'd be ready when they come back to the next meeting to perhaps take a position here. And so Sharon, what's your question? I was looking at your screen and you have Joe as the liaison and the alternate. It was clarified last time that I am the primary and he is the alternate. But your quick screenshot on there, I noticed it. And then I was like, okay, I got to look. His name's on there twice. So um, that's just to clarify. And Tom knows. Yeah, um, Karen, that's great. There. Thank you so much for your comment. And then, of course, you're welcome to vote. Okay. Any Thanks. other questions or comments? All right. So then we will take it. Tom, do you want to make a motion? And then if someone wants to second it? I'd like to make a motion that we uh, support um, this particular council file. I second. Right call second. All right, it has been motioned and seconded. So we will call it to a vote. And so as a small group, you can either raise your virtual hand or you may raise your hand hand of those who are in favor of supporting this CIS. I see Ray, Stephanie, Tom, I will vote yes. So that's four, Lorraine votes yes. I'm going to abstain. Uh, the reason is um, based on our standing rules. Uh, it isn't supporting a position we've previously taken, but I do intend to bring it up uh, in the homeless committee and support it. So for this purpose, I will abstain. All right, so we have one abstention. We have one, two, three, four, five, and then also Ray uh, in support. All those who oppose supporting this motion. And then in the other abstentions to add on. And I think Aida might have lost her internet. So we'll wait to ask oh. her when she comes back. Moran, I'm not sure that came as applause. Were you saying that as a, a yes hand? Yes, yes, oh. 100%. All right, thank you. And Sharon, did you want it as an abstention or as a support or a not support? I'm not sure I got your vote. I think I did it, but I would suggest um, since this is being recorded and people are not able to go and hear that you might want to just go and do a roll call vote so that they know who actually is voting. I mean, you can go and do your virtual hand, but I think when it's recorded that, you know, sure. just calling the names out would be helpful for those who are listening to the, the meeting, maybe, and not seeing it. Happy so it's just a suggestion, but um, I thought I put it up, but I guess it went down, but I'm a yes, okay. because obviously Rosita already did it. Yes. All right, Sharon, thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to do so. So Sharon is a yes, Moran is a yes, and then you can just verify, Moran? Yes. Ray? That's a yes for Ray. Stephanie? Stephanie, yes. And Pat is abstaining. Yes. Tom Booth. Tom, yes. Lorraine. Yes. Ken. Ken, yes. All right, and um, Aida, I'm sorry, I think that you lost internet for a second. And so were you able to hear the motion in the second? Yeah, I can hear the motion, but as you know, for our bylaws, I cannot vote. Okay. Thank you. I've got to take it back to the committee. And I'm going to lose you guys again. They're fixing some stuff here. So I'm constantly in and out. All right. Thank you for letting us know. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And so it passes by a vote of one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. 
one, two, three. So I have eight yeses that I count, one abstention, one no vote by Aida. Is there anyone who has a different vote? And Corinne is not uh, able to vote on this issue as she is a uh, last representative, according to our position rules. All right, so it passes. Thank you very much for voting. We'll go on from here. All right, going down then to our next is to give updates on upcoming LAPNA events. And so just to follow up on our CIS, we will send out then a position and to our um, neighborhood council partners, we'll send out the position and let them know what WAVENA said. We'll also send out the CIS and you know then suggested language uh, that they might be able to use if they also wanted to support it. If once they've gone back to their neighborhood council, they vote that way, or then they're welcome to just be aware that it's there and to weigh in if they wanted to do their CIS, however they vote on their neighborhood council. And so we will follow up and we'll you know send that out uh, today so that it then goes back to the neighborhood councils and they can take their own position and hopefully amplify their voice, which takes us to updates of upcoming WAVENA events. And so we have more events that are coming up. So we have our Amplify and Act series at our meeting uh, next week. And that meeting within, oh, flyer is here. And I will definitely put a link uh, into the chat if you also wanted to have that. And it was also attached um, as a PDF uh, to the email that went out. So if you wanted to post that for your neighborhood council or your organization, you could certainly do that. And then we also have another in our series of debates coming up, um, hopefully building on the success of the one that we had today. And so please mark on your calendars and save the date uh, for April 24th, which will be next month, where we have our city attorney debate. And we will be having a similar type of um, setup and inviting those candidates that are running for city attorney and then having them attend and debate uh, their positions before the election. We'll be sending out flyers. Um, this one is a save the date. We would appreciate it if you would post and then we will send another follow-up this week that has then the link so people can register and that can hopefully be posted on neighborhood council websites so that they are able to publicize and we can get more people to attend. And What's so the time on it? Uh, it would be, I believe, four o'clock. Same. Time? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. it would be four to five, and then uh, the general meeting would follow on that one. And so that is our next general meeting date is April 24th. For that one, Amplify and Act is next weekend. And Amplify and Act is, we've had, this is our third one in a series. It is more for people who don't um, have a lot of experience with neighborhood council or as a stakeholder who would be interested in finding out how to get the city government to work more for things that you wanted to amplify and how to take action on it, as well as our series of looking at how to get more directly involved and engaged. And so that would be, um, I'm sorry, I'm just looking up the date, 327. at 4 p.m. So there we go. All right, and with that, is there any other announcements or things that people have that they then wanted to announce? We have round table comments of announcements or wants and needs that people might have. I'd like just to mention that they have broken ground on the um, permanent supportive housing on Topanga. That's just, um, I believe, um, south of Devonshire. And so that's gonna be, I think, 54 um, beds or rooms. Uh, so that's for, you know, people who need uh, additional support uh, for, you know, maybe co-occurring type problems. So they might have medical issues and also be unhoused or whatever. So, so that's a good, Sign that we're moving in the right direction. Thanks. Ken, you had a question? Uh, yes, yeah, so I have a question for you uh, regarding, I introduced a proposal uh, to you just recently, Olivia, and I wanted to know what the process is in terms of that thing moving forward 
and if there's any opportunity that I would have to attend any hearing that you have. Thanks, Ken. Yeah, as I pointed out in my email to you, um, we definitely will take it back to the steering committee and then it would be agendized on our um, next month's meeting, um, like we did today with the vote. We're trying to put those things out a month ahead of time so that the neighborhood councils can also take a look and have time to take it to their neighborhood councils before they vote on it here. So we will definitely put it on our steering committee meeting and the steering committee will then look at it. I have it, um, your proposal. And then from there, uh, we'll agendize it and then it would be on our next meeting's agenda. So when would that steering committee meet? Exactly. So the steering committee is just the steering committee members that meet. Right. And so we meet the week before generally the meeting. And then I'd email you back right after that. Okay. Uh, would somebody who gives a proposal be invited to attend that to, to discuss the proposal or not? Generally, the steering committee is just steering committee members. Um, and then we would definitely like reach out to see, you know, if we have questions and definitely communicate back with you about you know, whatever questions that we have. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Of course, thank you. Any other questions or things to amplify or bring to the table? I did have one follow-up question, Tom. Do you know when the um, opening date is set tentatively for that? Uh, yes, that's early 2024. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's really a slow process. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought mm. you were going to say. But, yeah. I was excited about everything but that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Which is why we're here and why the need to keep pushing and try to get 54 beds and it's going to take over, you know, a year. And plus. So Sharon, question, comment. Yes, I ended up getting on late because I totally forgot and so um, how do I end up accessing the recording so that I can take and listen to what I missed, which mm -hmm. is basically um, like Corinne's report um, mm -hmm. and well, the, the rest of the pantry. Mm -hmm. So on the WaveNow Wave website, which I can pop that address in here, once we download it and upload it, it should be up in the next day or so. And I'll just pop that. email into the chat and then you should be able to um, get it on our website. We put that in there. There you go. I'll send you the link to the debate or the forum too. The forum will be posted as yeah as well. I have the link of the report. Oh you've got it. Okay. I do. Yeah. If you have a two pet, that's even better. I hope I do. <laughs> and Corinne? Yeah, I do. I do. I, they, they emailed me already. All right. Yay. Awesome. And also the chat, um, although I think we better look at it. Yes. <laughs> or the, the Q&A. Yeah, Pat, I'll reach out to you afterwards. We'll definitely get that up yeah. of, between the two of us. Oh, yeah. Bryn? Thank you, Olivia. I just wanted to follow up with Sharon. Sharon, did you want me to send you a sort of a report of what I reported on today? Um, yes, that would be helpful because I know that I go to the unhoused meeting and I think that um, Tom has that on as a report on there. But yeah, because like I said, totally forgot about it. And yeah, if you can go and send it to me, um, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. I will email you. Thank, Thank you. If you could send it to me too, that'd be great. I was, I was confused. <laughs> and co copy me too. All right, thank you to everyone for everything you bring to the table. We really appreciate you participating. We are on the dot. So Stephanie Mills as co-host, I just want to point out it's 6 p.m. and we hit like right there. And I love it. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing more precise. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. And we're really grateful for everyone who's attend the forum, for everyone who is attending today. And then we hope to see you on uh, for AFT and Amplify. And if not on the 24th of next month, which will be our next general meeting. If you have any needs in the meantime, you can find us uh, on the WaveNow website and contact us through there 
or you can also reach us at our email and I'll just pop that in the chat just in case you need that email if you don't have it. And that is, oh, I'm trying to copy it. There we go. Ooh, Great, thank you. So there you go, westvalleyna at gmail.com. So there is the wave not email. And so you can always send questions or comments and forward that on if anybody has anything like Ken who wants something added or anything like that, please feel free to use that email and we're happy to, to address whatever needs you have. All right, thank you so much. Have a good okay. night, everybody. Bye-bye. All right, bye. Thank you, bye-bye.